Hey, hey everyone, this is Neil Napier here. Just give me a very, very quick hello in the chat box if you can hear me all right. And a yes as well if you can see the screen as well. The screen should have a mind map on it. And don't worry about it. We'll go into so much detail for that. Okay, Lance says, uh, <laughs> Lance, definitely. I think you've got to turn your volume down. I hope this volume volume's okay though. Uh, let me just check something. Okay, excellent, 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 perfect. We have a lot of people in the session today. I'm kind of surprised actually because I thought this time might not suit everyone, but really happy to see everyone on the call. Uh, and I think all of you are coming in from different parts of the world, which is always nice. Let me read out some names because I always like to know who's on these sessions. We've got Rena, Dennis, Michael, Chase, Lance, Donna, Terry, Donna again, Don, Daniel, David, Dan Smith, John Drinkwater, Andrew Viggen. Hey, Andrew, good to see you on the call. Dennis, Lawrence, Rayner again, Matthew, Vickham, Webworks, William, David, Dennis, Dana, Robert, William, Kelly. Okay, lots of familiar faces and names. Excellent. So you're coming in from Atlanta, says Oronde, uh, and hello, says Glenna. And we've got you from Osaka, oh wow, excellent. Jim from Myrtle Beach, Glenna from Houston, Daniel from Fort Collins, uh, Ross, hey Ross, hey, good to see you on the call, Ross. Uh, Gregory from Atlanta, all right. Janne from Finland, Janne, I'm in Finland too. So that makes two of us. Okay, the weather hasn't been too kind today, but let's see how it goes. Ross says from Aruba, David, or rather Nick from Oregon, Mario from Las Vegas, and Guam says, Billy, audio mostly on the right channel. I don't know. I think the audio should be fine because this has been working all right recently. Hmm. Oh, well. Okay, cool. Excellent. All right. Now, let's get into today's session. Let me just check if Stephen's in the house already. Stephen, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. So Stephen's the real brains behind the operation especially when it comes to SEO and when it comes to software. So don't be surprised if I defer a lot of things over to him. But he knows so much more about SEO than I ever will. And if you have any tricky questions, he's the person to ask. All right, uh, cool. Stephen, I'll bring you in a little bit later when we talk more about you know, the technical side of things, perhaps. And in the meantime, if you can help with the questions as they come up, that'd be awesome in the chat box. Yeah, and yeah, also sure. got Alvin. Okay, thank you. You've also got Alvin on the call. Alvin, can you just check in for us? Hey, everyone. Alvin here. I hope I'm coming through loud and clear. Alvin, and uh, what Alvin? Yeah, you are excellent. So Alvin, as you know, is the operations person in at KV Social, and he'll be. You probably heard him doing a lot of demos, a lot of different videos where you can learn cool things about how to use different kind of software. So. Alvin's really, really good at simplifying how to use any software that you buy. So quite often you'll see us sending you video recommendations about what kind of software to invest in, what kind of software to use and why, and he's the one who does most of the videos for those. But today we want to talk about SinRanker. So this is the first bonus workshop that we're doing. We were only planning one initially, but then Stephen said that he can help do a second one on Wednesday. So we have that planned. Don't worry about it. We'll give you exact schedule of that later. But today is workshop number one. And let's talk about some of the admin stuff. Now, this is, you know, boring things, but we'll get them off quickly so that we can focus on the meaty part of the session, the content part of the session. The first thing is make sure you whitelist our email address in your inbox. Because if you don't do that, you won't get a replay when you send when we send you this later. If you don't do that, then you won't hear from us ever again. So make sure that you go to your email. There are many different ways of doing it. If you don't know, just Google it. Just whitelist our email address. Or if we email you, just add us to our friends list, if it's okay, of course. We'll try not to mail you too much. If you do, you can tell us off. The second thing is that I want you to join our Facebook group. And Alvin, if you could please drop a link to the Facebook group. Here's a reason why I think this is very, very important because we are diversifying how we reach out to our customers, that is you. And social media is one of the main sources, main places where we do that. Facebook group is where we actually offer most of our 
hidden training. And, and the reason for that is because we don't want it to be public. Facebook groups are closed groups. So you see it, and a week later, we post something new, and a week later, we post something new. So if you want to have your finger on the pulse, if you want to learn new things all the time, then joining the Facebook group is perhaps the best idea. So make sure you join the KB Success Group. I know the name, the bit corny, we'll improve that as we go along, but do join that group, and you can always reach out to us by that, especially about more creative questions about how to make money online or how to get clients for something like, you know, ranking. The third thing is make sure you are tracking results. I mean, I cannot emphasize this enough. There's no point running a traffic generation software if you are not analyzing where the best traffic or where the most traffic is coming from. It's only going to take a few minutes per website that you have, but please go to your sites and make sure that you have Google Analytics installed in them. If it's uh, InstaSuite, then InstaSuite already gives you different kind of traffic reports in that, so you don't need Google Analytics. But make sure that you are tracking results, because if you don't do that, as I mentioned, anything that I teach you today will be pointless, will be fruitless. We were able to, you know, the way we were able to use Google Analytics with SynRanker was that we ran campaigns from a lot of different social networks at once, just to see which one was working well. And we realized that there were only five or six of them that were consistently generating traffic. So we killed the campaign and we started focusing only on those five and six, five or six social networks and social bookmarking sites, and that way we could focus our efforts more. But initially, we had to do a more carpet bombing kind of approach. So you would need that as well to begin with when you are starting to use SendRanker. Is that okay so far? Is admin stuff clear? And don't worry, we'll do a demo today. We'll do a demo walkthrough. We'll point you to all the training resources you can go to, and we'll also give you some more advanced training, which will come under syndication secrets. And I hope this, this mind map is an okay way of teaching. I think it helps me to really put everything down in simple terms and explain this to you. So I hope that's okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Now, let's get into it. Okay. Some people are saying no sound. Can, can you hear me? Just give me a quick yes if you can hear me all right. Please, quick yes. Okay. Um, great. Annette says, mind map is cool. Love it, Neil. Alvin, if you could please type for everyone. If for some reason someone can't hear, then they perhaps need to go out and come back in again. If you can type that for people, that'd be great. Excellent. Okay, so let's go into the syndication process. So this is something that I'm going to pass over to Alvin soon because he did demonstrate this already in terms of uh, training videos, but I'll get him to explain this one more time. So when it comes to syndicating your content using SynRanker, the three steps basically that you have to take. Step number one is setting up different accounts. Now, depending on the level you have, which means if you have the main version, the pro version, you have different number of apps. And if you have the pro version, we'll continue adding more apps as and when we test them and we realize that they are good. So setting up the accounts can be a little bit painful process in the beginning. I can tell you what we are trying to do to rectify that though. I am trying to find someone on Fiverr or other places who can just set up all the different accounts for you. So if you don't want to do it yourself, you will be able to outsource it. Again, like I said, I'm still looking for it. It might still take me a week or so, but as soon as I have some contacts, I'll let you know. That way, all your accounts will be set up fine and you'll be able to syndicate easily. That's the first thing. The second thing, of course, is the syndication itself. Now, there are different ways of doing that. Like I mentioned, you can initially do carpet syndication, which means that you blast out your link to 15, 20, 30 different places at once and see which one clicks. You keep doing this for, let's say, a couple of months and you see which one's driving you most amount of traffic or which one's driving you buyer traffic. That's one thing to remember. Another thing to remember is that you can also then use this to grow your social media assets. So if you're regularly posting content on your Facebook fan page, your Facebook group, you know, your Twitter feed, your LinkedIn, you will basically attract more people to it because those people will, some people will share your content. Some people will just like it and that will give you a higher edge rank, for example. So this is also a good way to organically grow you're following on any social media that you're automatically posting on. Another cool thing you can do, and again, I'll discuss this in syndication secrets, is actually further growing your social media profile by pointing them to each other. Think about this for a second, right? You've got your money site in the middle, 
then you're driving traffic to it from your Facebook fan page, your Facebook group, your Twitter feed, your LinkedIn, YouTube, and whatnot. Now, what if you could also drive your YouTube viewers over to your fan page? What if you could also drive your fan page fans over to Twitter? Twitter to LinkedIn, LinkedIn to YouTube. And you keep on doing that. This way, you grow different assets at the same time as well. So we'll talk about that in syndication secrets. The third thing of the, the third part of the process is rinse or rather rinse and repeat, repeat and report, which means that once you figure out the process that's working for you, you keep checking the numbers, you keep looking at the numbers and you keep doing it over and over and over again. I'll be honest with you here. The whole idea of entrepreneurship about running a business sounds really charming. It sounds really great that, hey, I'm going to sit at home all day. I'm going to watch TV. At the same time, I'm going to run some websites and get some traffic. And that's true. I do that every single day, you know, when I'm not at work because I work full time somewhere else. I'm running, I'm doing a PhD. So when I'm not doing that, yes, I sit at home and I watch TV and I run different kind of campaigns. But at the same time, one thing that I have to do is look at my numbers. So don't ever, ever, ever neglect the end results, the end numbers, because it's all about the sales. It's all about the traffic. If you're not getting that, it's not really working. So you have to fine tune it till it works. With that being said, Alvin, if you're ready, can we do a, a walkthrough of Synranker? Can we show that in as much detail as possible? And then I'll discuss more techniques and, and advanced training with Synranker. All right, sure, Neil. Let me just grab the screen from you. Sure. All right, so guys, just give me a quick check. Give me a quick yes or what in the chat if both uh, audio and video is coming through loud and clear. You should see the dashboard right now for Sid Ranker. All right, perfect, perfect. So a lot of ones there, so everyone is uh, seeing the same screen. All right, so the first thing you you do with when you log into Sin Ranker is well of course you need to set up the accounts right so on this, the account section here you can click on add accounts and depending on the level of access that you have you can create multiple logins so I mean multiple accounts on each of the networks so again if you are working with different clients or you're working with uh, on different niches you can set up a, a specific profile or specific account just for that niche for example all right so once you set up the account everything will be listed here under my accounts and you can even group them based on on their tiers so for example you have one account uh, that's that's going to be just for sin ranker the other one for about just about fitness another one about uh, about yoga so you can segment your accounts based on whatever group that you select. So this way you can will be able to use them on just a particular niche rather than just using all the accounts all at once. So very, 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 very cool way to segregate multiple accounts based on whatever purpose it serves. So once you've set up the accounts, this is the time that you can start syndicating. Right? So there are several ways you can syndicate or use SynRanker. So you can use it to drive traffic to your website. For example, your WordPress blog, your InstaSuite blog, because pretty much everything right now has an RSS. So there are also some samples here. If you click on help, this is actually something really, really useful because I always seem to forget what the usual format for the YouTube feed, right, for the YouTube channel. So you can use this, for example. So uh, if you click on the help section on the right side here, on for the YouTube section, you're gonna have a quick example here. So you can, for example, if you have a YouTube channel or a YouTube account, and you would like to get more traffic to your videos. Again, this is not just for websites, but you can also use this as well for your YouTube channel if you want to get more views, get people, get more people to uh, to follow you or subscribe to your channel on on YouTube. So, for example, here you have the user section here. So you can just replace this lad, uh, ladif. I don't know how to pronounce this. You can just uh, replace this section here with your own username. So if you log into your YouTube account, for example, right, and you go to my channel, this is gonna be your channel ID. So if you go back to Sin Ranker, there you go. You can just match whatever 
works here. So this is this is a channel ID that I have. I'm gonna copy this link, for example. All right, copy this link. I'm gonna paste it on a new tab. And I just replace channel ID with a channel ID that I have from YouTube here. So I'm gonna copy this one here. Copy. And let's paste this and replace the channel ID section here and there we go. Press the return key and you will see the RSS feed of our YouTube channel. That easy. So anything you have set to public on your YouTube channel will be able to will be syndicated using SynRanker. So this is not just for websites. You can also have formats here for WordPress, FeedBurner, and of course your Twitter account as well. So if you want to syndicate whatever content you have on Twitter and of course get more traffic to any link that you post there you can also put that up and so that you, your Twitter account will get more hits okay so guys just a quick uh, heat check is everything clear so far I hope I'm not going too fast and if it's clear on how you can create your campaigns All right, so again, uh, just use the help, help section here if you're confused on how, how to get the URL. All right, so once you have the URL, let's say we're gonna go to our YouTube account, for example, here, All right? I'm gonna copy that, we're gonna put it, put it under the feed URL, and we simply select, right? We simply select the profile that we want to use. So remember that we, we able to group it earlier you were able to create groups so what about that so all you have to do is instead of being all here you can just set up a group for example sit ranker click on filter so only the those accounts that were set for that group will be shown here and you can just check them and select save campaign all right so once we're happy with this we have two options we can either schedule this or start setting up the campaign right away. So let's say for example you can save new campaign and there you go. It's an instant we didn't set up schedules now it's gonna start getting the post from our YouTube channel and start posting that or start syndicating that to the social media networks that we have selected. So yes, if you have a campaign especially for plumbers you can set up profiles especially for that niche as an uh, let's say for example a Twitter account all about, all about plumbing you have a Facebook account all about plumbing and you can use that just specifically for that niche so that's where you don't confuse one niche to, to the other all right so that's how you're able to set up the campaign so uh, as well you can also create scheduled campaigns so for those who don't want to like get traffic right away and you want to group feed the content you can also do that here so if you create a new campaign here and if we select again this use the YouTube example here and this time we're gonna select here too let's try to have let's check if we have an account here alright so let's say we're gonna use the sin one here and sin five for medium alright and from here we're gonna select scheduled and click on next so here you can adjust how your content is gonna be drip fed based on the profile that you have selected. Let's say for after one day, we're going to post on the the scene ranker one account on, on medium network, and the second account is going to post after a few hours. Let's say after five hours of the campaign. So now you have your campaign set to to be released on 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 the sin or the uh, scene ranker five account on fifth hour from setup, and after one day, it's going to be it's going to be reposted on the other account all right so guys let me know if that makes a lot of sense again you can drip feed the content this way your links don't come in all at once and this will appear that your content is naturally created it's not it's not like you're using a automation software all right so once you have set up your campaigns you, you can also create the check the report section here so this is something that you can use 
to, for example, if you're working with clients, if you're if you're using it yourself, you, it's going to be a quick reference for you and where your links are posted. So if you click on view report here, it will automatically see where the links are all posted. As you can see, we use this posted on different blogspot, blogspot or blogger accounts, and you will see the, the content there as well if you open that up. Right there, you go. So, aside from that, if you're working with clients, usually they ask you, "What or what have you done to my website? What what campaigns have you done? Have, have, what kind of links have you per created for my site?" So, how you use that is you're gonna download the report here. It's gonna be an Excel format, like a spreadsheet. So you can convert this put into a PDF, or you can format it anywhere you any way you want. So if you click on save for this. It's going to show you all the links. There we go, for example. Close this one, click on Enable Editing. And you can reformat this to how, however you want. You can copy this one into a Word document and add your own logo to the header or footer, for example, for additional branding. Or you can just export this one and save it as a PDF so that you can give out to your clients. All right, so yeah, so you can use the reports here for client use as well. And of course, if you do have the the agency license, you can also manage all of your clients here using the built-in manager. So you can set up an account for them. They're gonna be able to get the elite package. And of course, you can also turn off access if they stop paying the monthly fee or the yearly fee, or depending on how you were able to set up your uh, pricing for the agency license. All right, so guys, let me know if everything is clear. And for those who do have questions, let me know in the chat box as well. So do we Alvin, use the same can we show, Sorry, a question for you. Can we also show how to create an RSS feed? Because I don't think we did that. I know feed burner is an option, but can we also demo that quickly? Sure. Uh, yeah, for, for most likely, for those who don't have, uh, for those who, don't, who actually don't have a WordPress site, or you don't use InstaSuite, this is an option for you. But for, for those who do have WordPress and InstaSuite, then you don't need to create an RSS uh, an, an RSS feed because it's already built in with that. All right, so uh, let's go to, just a quick question by the way. Uh, if, if you don't use WordPress and if you don't use InstaSuite, can you tell me what kind of, uh, what kind of websites do you have? Are you using PHP, HTML? Yeah, because if you're using WordPress, it already has a built-in RSS. So let me show you, for example, for, uh, let me see, let me show you for WordPress. Let me, it's very, very easy. So if you go to the campaign section here and create a new campaign, again, you, this is going to be your best friend in setting up, setting up the campaign, the help section here. I use it a lot. So you just copy and paste the link for WordPress from here. Place it on a new tab, new URL, and just replace the website. Instead of marklabs.com, you can change this, for example, to uh, kvsocial.com slash feed. And there you go. That's your RSS feed for WordPress. Just copy and paste the link to Syndranker and just close the help section here and paste that here so that it's going to copy that URL to that page. So very, very simple to use when it comes to uh, if you have, especially if you have WordPress. All right, so let me see. All right, so I run a campaign and no... Sorry, uh, sorry. I want to clarify one thing, Alvin. So some people are saying that when I run a campaign, for example, and I set it to instant, the results don't show up. Well, there are a couple of things you need to know about that. Number one, the results will, as of now, only work for the new posts that you put out. So they will not work if you have old posts that are already, nothing's going to happen. Basically, this is on action. So as soon as the post is published, that's when, you know, it, it basically gets syndicated across different social media sites. So that's the first thing to remember. Second thing to remember here is that you need to check, this is important, you need to check that your feed is actually correct. 
I think I'm trying to find the link here right now because someone had posted this in um, in the KB Social group to to basically show how to validate your own feed. Let me just find that. I think I just did. Yeah, there we go. So someone posted this link. If you go, uh, that doesn't look right. Wait, let me just find it again. So if it's, you go to this link, sorry, go ahead, Alvin. No, it's it, it's the w3.org uh, link. That's the one you need. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So if you and Alvin, maybe you can show that as well for Alex. You know, Alex, or or, or I can show that for Alex. Let me copy over Alex's feed, and um, let me just check. Yeah, let me okay, share the um, link as well. Yeah, all right, I already shared it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me just share my screen. For for those guys yeah. asking if it would work on Shopify, it's it's a really easy answer. If Shopify has an RSS feed, yes, it will work. Uh, I don't know. I'm not super familiar with Shopify, but uh, I'm like 99% sure they do have an RSS feed. And if they don't have it natively, they will have a plugin for it uh, for you to create an RSS feed. So for Shopify, it will definitely work as well. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Okay, so let me just get this blog, for example. So creating an RSS feed, I mean, typically, the WordPress plugins that will help you create one, they're free. Just really, this is the easiest part in the entire process. Google it. Google how to create an RSS feed for my blog, and trust me, you will find answers for that. But even if I take this, let me just, um, let me go ahead next. If it's a WordPress blog, typically, it will give you a feed. Right, so this is a common feed, this is a regular feed. If I go and check this out, it will make sense. I mean, it will read something like something tangible. And then I can go over here and uh, validate this feed as well. Let me make sure it's fine. Okay, so this is a valid RSS feed, which means that yes, it should work, but again, it will only work when you post something new, because if you're not posting something new, as of now, you know, as Stephen mentioned to someone else in chat, you, this will only work with a new post. We are currently working on a WordPress plugin as well for you guys, so that you can use it with old WordPress posts as well, but it might still take us a couple of weeks to get that out of the door, to be fully tested. So that way, if you already have a blog with, let's say, 100 posts, you will be able to also syndicate those. But again, it's another couple of weeks in the works. That was the tongue twister. Okay, cool, let me see. Um, David's asking, is the RSS the feed of the blogs? Yes, it is. I can't remember what it's called now, but yes, it is, like what RSS refers to. Um, yep, Lauren says, monthly fees were mentioned. Can we go over that again? So yeah, what Alvin was saying was that if you're selling the agency package, then it would be highly recommended to charge a monthly fee. It could be a small fee. It could be a higher fee. depends how hands-on you want it to be. But if you are just selling it to someone as an account, you can sell it for even $17 a month. That's still free money. But if you are selling it to a client with some work involved, you can even go as high as $97 a month. It's up to you. Like, really, it's up to you. You can do the entire setup for them, and you can charge them accordingly. So really, I mean, it, it's up to you how much you want to charge for these things. Does it so, does this software cause any security alerts with Facebook that could get our accounts disabled? Oronde, most likely not, because, I mean, use it in moderation. For starters, someone today told me that they have an auto-blogging uh, blog that they're publishing 100 articles on every single day. And they want to ping, I think he said, 10 of their Facebook groups every day. I mean, that's a lot. 1,000 posts on Facebook a day is a bit too much. So, you know, be reasonable with it. And I don't think anything will happen. But if you are unreasonable, I'm sure Facebook will come down on you. Any network will come down on you. So just plan that accordingly. Hey, Neil? Yeah. Uh, I, I sent you a message on, uh, on, on our system. Uh, there's a website I wanted to share with everybody. It's fetchrss.com. And using that website, you can uh, very smartly create RSS feeds uh, for uh, stuff like, for, for example, Instagram. Um, it's also easy to use nice. with Twitter and stuff like that. So it's a really cool uh, kind of trick in between where you, where you can take uh, content from sp specific websites that might not have an RSS feed or something that you might not be able to access and then use this website to convert it into an RSS feed uh, still. Even Amazon and eBay work on this website as well. Great, 
Great, excellent. Um, Alvin, if you can just help answer a few questions that are just coming in recently, that'd be great. But this is something, this is really, really powerful, by the way, guys. And again, Stephen's kind of opened the doors for an explosion of traffic to your social media accounts as well. And I'm going to share that with you in syndication secrets in a little bit. But if you have this, if you can create RSS feed to basically any, or rather most social media platforms, this is golden. This is really, really good. Like I know for a fact that you can create RSS feed from Facebook fan page. You can do that from YouTube channel. Now it looks like you can do it from Instagram as well. I mean, this is awesome. Like this is really, really good. You just have to think about the traffic potential there. So please bookmark that link that I have posted in the chat box. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and uh, look at all the questions as well. Yeah, Annette, I think yeah, that answers your question. I think it's it's perfect timing, Annette, that you were asking, how do I get RSS feed for Facebook page, Instagram, etc.? So there we go. Uh, when you say, okay, point of clarification, says Lance, when you say WordPress blog, do you mean hosted at WordPress? Or I have several WordPress sites. Lance, it's just a WordPress site. It could be your own. It could be your own WordPress site on your own server. It could be a WordPress.org site on their server. It doesn't matter. I mean, the, the thing... Okay, let me try and explain this in a very simple way. As long as you're creating content regularly, it is most likely that there's a mechanism online to create an RSS feed of it. Okay? So it doesn't matter if it's Shopify, it doesn't matter if it's WordPress, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, it doesn't matter. There most likely is a mechanism to create an RSS feed. And if you have a mechanism for that, we can basically help you exploit your traffic. That's the thing to take away. All right, good. Okay, uh, let's see. So do I have to pay, um, Lawrence, so if you already have an agency license, if you already purchased it, you don't need to pay again if you set up an account underneath that for someone else. Okay, Alex, I think I already showed you that your feed is valid. I mean, do check it yourself, but let me, let me just do this for you. Okay. There we go. I think it showed that your feed was valid, so your feed is valid. I think the most likely issue that I can see with this is perhaps, you know, and, and let me see, maybe content hasn't been posted recently, maybe? I don't know. Or maybe, let me see. Yeah, so this content was posted on the 6th of on the 7th of June, right? If I go further here, let me see. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see any content posting posted here since the 7th of June. And if that's the case, as I have clarified a few times, this only, only, only works when you post a new blog post, okay? This will not, at the moment, work for the old blog post. There we go, June 19th. So unless you post a blog post right now, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't syndicate anything. Is that okay, Alex? Yeah. Okay, excellent. And I hope this is a clear for everyone as well because it's great, but you got to post content. I mean, you can even do auto posting of some sort. That's fine. But as long as you do that, it works. So let me head back to the presentation. Syndication process, simple as we showed you, setting up the accounts, content syndication, and then repeat and report. And there is training for this in the Fresh Desk Solution Center as well. So if you get stuck, go ahead and check it out and contact us if you still can't figure things out. So let's talk about networks and in integrations. They can be a little bit difficult in the beginning. Some of them are easy. You just put your username and password. You're good to go. For something like Facebook, you need to create apps and stuff. I mean, unfortunately, we cannot simplify that anymore. That's as simple as it gets. So follow instructions. You don't need all of them to begin with. I would say start with 10. Measure, figure out which one's working best. And when you do, switch it out with, you know, switch out the bad ones with something else. And it will work. Now, a few features that perhaps we couldn't cover here today was number one, additional networks. As you already know, if you got the pro offer, you get 15 more networks with that. Five of them are already available, 10 of them are being tested, and we'll try and add maybe one or two more every month, you know, just to keep things fresh. So that's for the pro version. 
Then we also have the indexing, or rather we have the content spinning option for the pro version as well. And um, let me see, Alvin, can we show the, just show the content spinning and indexing option as well? Because I don't know if we showed that yet. Alvin? Okay, well, maybe he's on a coffee break. But, um, Stephen, if you could check that for me, please. Just, you know, message him and see what's, what he's up to. Uh, but in the meantime, yes, you can do... Con Sorry? I'll check. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, so you can do content spinning as well, which means that every content that goes out to different social media sites is basically unique. Now, this is a good thing because then there's little chances of duplication and every time the content looks different. So... If you have Spin Rewriter, we have integration with that. Simply put in your Spin Rewriter details, and any content that goes out from there on will be automatically spun for you. Then we also have indexing. So let me explain this. If you, let's say, syndicate out your content to 100 different sites every day, what you also want to do after that is syndicate these 100 different links. Because if you don't do that, Google will not pick them up. Or, you know, it will, but it will be slow. So, for example, it's like, it's like this, that Google is the postman, right? And when you go out and make a post, you put it in the post box. In this case, the postman won't come to post box, so they will come to the post box and, box and check what mails are waiting. They'll pick up some mails, they'll forget some others. Some others will just get shifted down in the pile. So you've got to tell the postman, hey, postman, I've put a post in there, make sure you check it. So indexer is like that. It's like the connection between you and the postman so that your post doesn't get lost in the, in the process. So if you want to make sure that all your links are being picked up by Google, Indexer can help you do that. That was, as you know, another upgrade, uh, which was only monthly because indexes are hard to, to keep up. They're expensive. So in that case, if you have Indexer, you can use that too. The external indexers as well that are available out there, you can try them out. It's up to you. But I think they work really well to get your links, your syndicated links, ranking faster, which is what you want. Now, Alvin talked about selling this to clients as well. There are a few different ways to do it. The first way is offering this as an add-on service. So, for example, if your client says, hey, I want someone to help me generate more SEO traffic, you can say, I'm your man or I'm your woman. And then you can create tons of links for them on their social media assets. So not only will you help grow their traffic profile, but you're also gonna help grow their social media accounts. That's the first thing you can do. You can also team up with content writers. Go find freelancers on Upwork, people who are doing content creation. Say, hey, if you've got a client who needs, you know, social syndication, let me know, and I can do it for them, and I'll give you 20% or whatever I get paid. So you can do that for them as well. And remember, you can always charge a front to set up an account for them. So for every account, you can charge $10, $20, whatever you want. And if you're doing 10 of them, 20 of them, that's $400 a front and then $17 a month. Just maintenance. And you don't have to do anything for it. So you can do that too. Then you can find the blogs that have RSS feeds and you can reach out to them. So for example, I did a quick Google search um, earlier like this one, right? So they have, uh, I can create a feed for them if they don't already have one, I think they do. But I can reach out to this person and I say, hey, uh, you've got a nice blog. Okay, actually this person's been blogging for a while. Said they're, well, they haven't blogged for a while, since 2007. Wow. Okay, so maybe not this one, but what I could do is I could still go find other blogs that maybe don't have an RSS feed and I can offer it to them as a service that I can create your RSS feed and I can syndicate it across social media sites. I can get you more traffic. So you can do that as well, right? So that's one way to sell the agency license too. Then, same thing with YouTube channels. You can find out YouTube channels that have RSS feeds or you know that, that are posting regularly and then you can make a similar deal with them. Like Steven just showed you, same thing for Instagram, same thing for Facebook fan pages. I mean, just think about this for a second, right? There's a fan page owner out there that's posting five times a day on their fan page and nowhere else, like nowhere else. What if they could have 10 different social media accounts 
pointing back to that fan page as well. Do you think the fan pages would grow? Yes or no? You can be that person to help them do that. You can be that solution creator for people who want to generate traffic, but they don't know how, they don't know where to start. You can take care of that. All right. Uh, what benefit of YouTube feed effects to my website? Alex, nothing, but you can get more traffic to your YouTube account. Anything that has an RSS feed, you can get more traffic to that, basically. Uh, Lawrence, I will ask you to please watch the replay when it goes, when it becomes available. If you want more clarification on that. Okay. How often should we post to all the different accounts? Once per hour, twice per hour? I think even once per hour is too much, in my opinion. I mean, depends on how many posts you make, Robert, every single week, let's say. I would say two posts a week is good enough. Five posts a week is fine. And if you're doing that, and if you're publishing to 10 networks, you're basically, let's say, five posts to 10 networks every week. That's 50 posts a week. You can spread them out quite easily. You can spread them out. It depends a little bit on what kind of uh, social media accounts you're using, right? So if you're doing it, for example, to a Tumblr page, uh, once a week is, is, you know, once, twice a week is good. But if you're talking about Twitter, then doing it multiple times a day is, is okay as well. So you need to be kind of aware as to where you're syndicating your content as well. Yeah, exactly. And I think Stephen's the authority there, so trust anything he says on, you know, matters of SEO and, and content create well, syndication mostly, I think. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Now, I want to move on to syndication secrets. Now, this is a little bit more advanced, so just, you know, hang tight. Basically, what I want you to do for this part of the session is grab a piece of paper, blank paper, uh, and I'm going to grab some water, so I'll give you some time to grab a you know, big piece of paper and a pen as well. Okay, so do that. I'm going to do really bad drawings on paint, but you can do it on a piece of paper. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, excellent. Now I hope you have a piece of paper and I hope you have a pen and let's now talk about syndication secrets. Now, as we already mentioned, this I already covered, when it comes to RSS feeds, you can create them from multiple different places and this is important to remember in this case. You can have RSS feed from multiple different places. Then, what I want you to think about here is that you need to stagger authority. So let me give you an example. Let's say you haven't, you barely posted on any social media sites for the last three years, and suddenly you come out all guns blazing, and you've got, you know, your AK-47, and you're shooting out 50 different links every day to all these different networks. That's going to look really bad. These networks are going to look at you and think you're a spammer, because you basically, I don't know, we're posting 50 times a day. You know, so you have to stagger authority. Scheduling is a great way to do that because when a post goes live, if you're posting on, let's say, even 20 different networks, you can stagger it. Post it on four networks today, four more tomorrow, four more the day after, the day after, and the day after. So 20 networks in five days. It's quite balanced, right? If you post it on 20 networks, all 20 networks on the same day, and then you do it again the next day and the next day, it becomes really chaotic it's going to get messy, you know, it's going to appear spammy. So when it comes to building links, as with anything, and I think maybe I'll invite Stephen to talk more about this, stagger them slowly. Don't, no need to rush into it. It's a, it's a long-term game. I mean, short-term traffic with social media, long-term traffic with your backlinks that you're building, but let it, you know, let it go slowly. No need to rush it. Stephen, what do you think? Uh, yeah, like... And anything that has to do with SEO, you always have to think with yourself, would a human do this? Is this humanly possible? As, as soon as you think, well, uh, this is too much, then Google 
automatically has some very smart algorithms that it also realizes this is too much. And if that happens on a continuous basis, then Google will penalize you or might penalize you. So that's just something you need to be really, really careful on. Anything you do in any SEO, including uh, Sintra Anchor, of course, is just uh, think by yourself, is this humanly possible? Like uh, Google is fine with you syndicating content. Everybody does this, like the, the biggest CNN, BBC, they all do this, but uh, you, you can't overdo it. You can't push it uh, over the limits and start spamming because if, if Google sees that, they will obviously uh, start marking your uh, assets uh, as like spammy, uh, spammy sites and then you will drop in rankings and you might even get penalized. Exactly, I mean, like Steven said, as with anything that could appear inhuman, it could penalize you in the, at the end of the day. So you want it to be as normal as possible. So just think about, like Steven said, how often would a normal person post? Autoblogging is okay as well. I mean, it really is okay if you post three times a day. But if you are shooting it to 50 different social media places every day, it's going to appear really strange. Your backlinks are going to build up really quickly, and Google's going to realize, okay, you've been trying to game them. You know, so don't do that. Now, let's talk about different account types. As um, Alvin showed you about groups as well, there are a few different kind of accounts. You've got social media accounts like your Facebooks and YouTube and Pinterest and Instagram. Then you've got social book marketing. Wow, that's terrible. Social bookmarking uh, sites, which are like Tumblr, you know, Web 2.0 sites like WordPress.org and all these different places. I think Blogger was one as well. So you got that too. Then we have image sharing sites as well at the moment. It's only Flickr. Video sharing we don't have any at the moment. We'll see how we can add one later. So you've got all these different sites and, you know, they all work in different ways. Social media sites basically help you build following immediately, right? And people who see, see it being posted on the, your fan pages or your groups, they'll jump on over to read the article. So you get some immediate burst of traffic from that. Then over the long term, you get traffic from social bookmarking. So when you put up your syndicated content on you know, these social bookmarking websites, basically you create tags for them and people find them over time. You know, they get indexed, they get ranked, and then your site gets ranked. That's how the entire process goes. Image sharing and video sharing, again, is more tag-based. So people come across them and then they jump on over to your site to view some of that content as well. So there are different kind of sites and different kind of ways with which you can drive traffic back to your site. But the key thing where I'm going to use my terrible pain skills comes down to tiered linking. So this is kind of a very, very important concept. I mean, let me actually start with this. And then again, it'll make sense to you as I go along uh, if, I, if I draw it right. So let's see. You've got in the middle, let's say, actually, I want to use a box. There we go. In the middle, you've got your, huh, I need it. In the middle, you have your money site. Okay, so in the middle, you have your money site, and, you know, this is the one that generates you all the income that you want, and uh, you basically are looking to rank, you know, all the pages under the site, which is okay. That's what anyone would do. So what you do is you start syndicating content to it. Uh, which means that you set up, let's say, I'm going to use this. Uh, Neil, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I think your screen is frozen. It is indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so it's probably a good thing no one saw me doing shapes on paint really slowly. But you've got all these different sites then that you are syndicating to to point, you know, your links back into. So, for example, this could be Facebook, uh, you know, just say fan page, right? This could be Twitter. This could be mm, Pinterest. This could be Tumblr. And this could be Flickr. So what you're doing now is you are pointing, you're basically driving traffic from these places into your money site, which is, you know, it's okay. It makes sense. That's how you want it to be. Eventually, over time, what's going to happen is that some of these links like Tumblr and Flickr will start ranking, or rather they'll start driving links back to your, your money site. It'll start ranking uh, up, so it'll go up. And then at the same time, you will also have uh, some social media traffic coming from, let's say, here, instantly basically driving 
potentially sales to you as well. So, you know, it, it works both ways and that's a good thing, right? That's the most simplest kind of setup that you can have. So if I go here, you've got money side and then you've got level one sites over here. I don't know if there's like a dotted circle. There isn't like, otherwise I could show you that. So you've got money side in the middle and level one sites over here, which is good. It, it's a normal setup. What you can then also do is you can combine money sites plus you can do level one cross linking. So say you realize that, hey, your fan page is actually a really big asset. It's a really important asset, right? You like this. So what you can do now is you can say, okay, you know what? I can create an RSS feed from this. So let me also drive traffic from other sources back to this. So you say, okay, I'm going to drive traffic here, right? And then you say, okay, I'm going to also use Twitter to drive traffic back to fan page. So what starts happening now is that your fan page becomes even bigger. Your fan page grows in size because you are actually now syndicating the content being posted there to other places as well, which are then driving traffic back to you. So you will also realize over time that even this gets bigger. So you're actually driving more traffic now from the fan page to your money site. So this way you're now growing multiple assets. That's the second way of doing it. It's simple, as long as you build out these RSS feeds as well. And it's automatic, you know why? Because let's say, okay, this is cool. Because on day zero, you put out content on money site and on day one, it goes to all these different places. That day one for your fan page is day zero. So when that starts indicating content, basically it explodes. You get traffic coming in from all the different sources at all the different times. So it becomes cyclical in a way. You're basically moving your traffic around your social media assets. You're making it work for you. Does that make sense? Can you see the power of doing this? Uh, good question. Sela is saying, won't you be duplicating content on Facebook? Yes, you will. But if you do it over time, it doesn't matter. I'm not asking you to do it like, you know, right one day after the other, but you could space it out by a week, right? So any content that goes onto the fan page, after one week, it gets syndicated to these places, to Twitter and, and LinkedIn or Pinterest. That way you've given it enough time. You've given it enough space so that no one remembers it. I mean, please understand this. Social media content has very, very short lifetime span. Very short, unless you're a viral video. Right? So in that case, you can slowly rotate this content on social media. No need to do it immediately. Don't hammer it, let's say, okay, one day I post it, second day, third day, and it's done. No. Space it out over a week, a month, three months. That's what the recurring feature is for. That's what the scheduling is for, to give you time to make your content go around and feed back into your money sites, send you more traffic over time. Joy says sort of like a solar system. Yes. Exactly like that. Make it work for you. I mean, I think, according to what Joy is saying, remember, each of, you know, if this is the sun, all of these are planets, even the planets have their tiny moons, right? All the planets, oops, all the planets have their tiny moons. That's exactly it. That's how I want you to imagine this that you're building out something and you're basically building out your own assets. Steven, I think you were the one who just said PBM to someone. I don't know if you did, but do you want to talk about that quickly, if it's relevant in this context? Uh, well, somebody was asking about outbound links and uh, inbound links and uh, ratio, specific ratio uh, for, for that. So it's not completely relevant, but I can answer it anyway. Um, sure. So the specific ratio in a lot of things, like somebody asked me about frequency of posting as well, these are not numbers that really exist. There's no perfect in the middle number that gets you the most juice, you know. It, it depends on a million different factors, uh, being age being really one, authority being one. Like uh, if you're just starting out with your account, then uh, blasting 10 links a day or 15 links a day is just not a good idea. Just a few start slowly and build it up that's really important and it's the same with with, uh, with PBN links as well 
and uh, to answer the question of for the outbound inbound links, uh, you know, you never want to have too many outbound links. Uh, one outbound link per post for a PBN is a maximum. I would say, and all the rest, like your menu links, your footer links, should all be focused on internal silo linking. Oh, uh, Alex is asking, what is PBN? Private blog network. It's a very common strategy for uh, SEOers uh, to uh, have a lot of different assets, different websites, uh, web 2.0 uh, sites, and social media uh, accounts, and then uh, basically interlinking them to kind of spread out the linking juice, the SEO power of those, of the network you're building, and then um, uh, putting links from uh, your assets to your money website, that's your important website where you uh, eventually want to uh, rank with, and then uh, using uh, your network to, to push up your rankings uh, by uh, using your network to link back, to create backlinks. And, you know, I'll put a big disclaimer here. This is what Steven's talking about is really advanced stuff. And, and it might only be relevant to 1% of people who are on this session. So don't worry if it goes over your head. Trust me, it goes over my head too. And I won't think again about it because it's easy enough if you follow what I'm showing you here, right? It's easy enough that you spend time on building this, but, you you know, if you find a good social media asset, you also spend time on building that. The point being that you shouldn't just utilize this RSS feed, but you should also utilize RSS feeds from these places. So that's the second thing, money site plus level one cross-linking. The third thing is money site plus level one plus level two sites. So it goes into this moon theory I was talking about earlier. So you've got all these different you know, moons that belong to these planets, and you're doing the same thing as you were doing earlier. You're driving traffic from these moons over to these planets. So this could be, for example, let me just do this. This could be some other Twitter channel, you know, not the one that we're talking about here, but this could be some other Twitter channel. This could be Instagram, right? This could be some other Facebook fan page. Doesn't have to be this one. So that way now, these are the really secondary units that you're not trying to rank ever. They just basically exist to feed into this. And this exists to not just feed into this, but maybe also build authority. Because let's say if you're building your money site, which is around, you know, you're training people on how to uh, lose weight with paleo diet, right? And you notice that, okay, if my fan page is getting a lot of traction. So you start doing level, you know, the second method that I've shown you, you start driving more traffic. And then you set up little satellites to drive more traffic over to this. Point being that you're not just driving traffic here, but you're also building its authority over time, which of course now runs in parallel with your money site. So that's the thing to remember, that this is all about growing your assets. It's, I mean, Stephen said it's a slow process. I agree, but the cool thing is you can set it up quickly. You don't need to set it up over time. It just takes time to gradually build up. And don't no need to rush this, because if you rush it, it will look spammy. So just, I mean, think about exponentially how many links you can create with this. But, you know, it's not just about the links, but how often your brand name will be visible online. Basically, you'll flood, you know, your, good, your content out there, especially if you're doing great content. If you're doing two great posts a week, I mean, just, God, just think about the potential there, right? Because let's say if you're doing two great posts a week, let me do some quick math for you here. So if you're doing two great posts a week, then let's say the number of blog posts you have is two. Let's say you drive them to 20 different social networks, or let's say just 10 different social networks every week, two of them, right? So you're posting on social media 20 times a week, okay? That's just level one that we're talking about. Let's say you want to use two of those to do a lot of cross-posting as well. So you're basically now posting 20 times more on social media. Okay, then let's say you even have satellites that exist and to all of these 20 places, you've got three more linking back in. So now you're posting 60 more times. And all of this looks unique. That's the thing. Or even if it doesn't, you can space it out over time. So this is something you do every week. Let's say this all together comes up to about 102 times people can see your website link. Right? You just do this once. 
and then you repeat it after let's say 60 days and remember when you repeat it there's probably another campaign already running posting some other link 102 times on your social media so this basically becomes all about your brand name it becomes all about your blog now I'll be honest there eventually you realize okay this is an overkill I don't need to do that which is fine so instead of doing 10 different social medias do only five so you basically start cutting down these things right so this way you can quickly test and work out what's working and what isn't working that's all syndication is about it's about letting a process run on complete autopilot delivering immediate traffic to you but also delivering long-term links to backs to your website so you can rank them over time okay uh, let me just see. Yes, I can expand the mind map bubble. Let me just go in here. There we go. Let me expand this too. Okay. So, I'll quickly tell you also what's next because this is the core part of what I wanted to show you today. So, let me tell you what's next. So, what's next is that we are doing, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the call, another session, a follow-up session to this more focused on local because so far we've been focusing on the general you know attributes of basically putting out new content all the time but what if you're not putting out new content all the time what if your content is old what if you want to do more with the content that you had before or you know you want to put a lot of content immediately and not do anything after what can you do about that so this is what we're going to discuss on the next session maybe Stephen can shed some more light on that as well the first thing is a 24 hour ranking challenge. Maybe Stephen, you want to talk about this because I know this is more your forte. Sure, sure. So uh, basically on the next session we all want to invite you to, uh, we are going to show you uh, a very, very cool uh, solution uh, to actually uh, dominate the rankings in the local niches. So local niches is more when you think about your lo your local plumber or uh, your local doctors or whatever you can think of that is uh, very local uh, speci specific like maybe even your local painter you know your house painter or stuff like that and uh, back in 2008 we were in the days with SEO where ranking was really easy with some uh, half shady tricks uh, a little bit of spamming here and there but it really really worked back in the days and you could rank stuff really fast and people were making a shit ton of money, excuse my language. But um, yeah, so in the next uh, webinar we are going to show you, we're going to give ourselves a 24 hour ranking challenge and you're going to be uh, witnessing if we make it and if uh, what kind of results we're going to get. So uh, definitely come and find out if we uh, manage to get any real results and um, we're going to show you how we create these assets it's just websites basically building on, on uh, WordPress with some tricks and uh, some other stuff around it so we're going to show it to you right on the screen so that's going to be really cool and there's not going to be any pitch there's nothing anything for sale you're just going to learn and see uh, how we do uh, dominate the local SEO uh, ranking so if you're interested in that at all definitely need to be there and uh, we're of course also going to uh, learn and basically show you how to use this superpower in a combination with Sindranker. And as you can see on the screen here, this is uh, an, another user of the of our software. And uh, well, uh, he he he's getting he's getting some really cool and awesome uh, results uh, using that particular software. Uh, so I, I think that's going to be a very interesting uh, webinar uh, about the local uh, SEO. So if, if, if you're at all interested in that, uh, definitely be there. And if I get the time correct, it's Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, right, Neil? Yes, 5 p.m. Eastern. So, and we're going to have some guests on that webinar as well. Uh, so, you know, uh, my friends Herc, Magnus, and Todd Spears, those guys. Like, I've been around in SEO for, for quite a while, uh, about... Um, yeah, I would say eight years now. Uh, I've actually been doing some SEO for a major hotel chain in the Netherlands when I just started out my online career. Uh, but these two guys that are going to be on the webinar with us are in it even f even 
even longer than I have. Uh, Todd Spears is actually one of the first people in the world to start teaching PBNs, so the private block networks we just spoke about uh, earlier. So uh, they, those guys are going to share a, a ton of knowledge with us. And uh, well, I'll be there as well. Uh, Neil will be there for a little bit as well. So uh, yeah, that's Wednesday the 28th. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's Wednesday the 28th indeed, uh, Larry. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'm hoping uh, hoping to sh see you all there uh, the next Wednesday. And let me see quickly uh, and go through some questions. If there's still any, if there's any really specific SEO questions, guys, uh, just feel free to kind of throw them into the to the chat right now, so I can uh, go over them. Uh, if you're really burning with that question, I'm just okay, going to scroll through. And yeah, while you're ahead. doing that, yeah, I think Colin's got a question for you, Stephen. But Larry's asking, am I signed up for the Wednesday webinar already? So we're going to use the same one. So you're going to get another notification about the Wednesday webinar. Same link as you came in today with. Uh, we'll, we'll email you, don't worry. But also, please, just put it somewhere. I mean, what I typically do is I save them in a notepad and I save it on my hard drive so I don't forget about these things. So yes, we'll tell you about it, but make sure that you also uh, attend you save the link somewhere so you can attend that with us. Okay, Lauren saying, thanks so much, it was great. I'm looking to build slowly. Do press releases work? Alex, they do work quite well. Uh, we haven't talked about this today because they of course cost something depending on when you, where you're posting. And you also have to kind of nail them down. You have to get it done right. Uh, so yes, press releases do work. Colin, we should have uh, something for the next one as well, if that's what you were asking. Okay. Press releases are de and definitely very uh, effective, but a little bit more expensive, right? So if yeah. you want to do press releases right, you, you're looking at uh, spending like a few hundred dollars uh, to begin with. So, you know, that's definitely something to be uh, aware of. Sure. And uh, Colin and everyone else who is asking, please understand, I've said this a few times in chat, we will release a replay of this within 24 hours, hopefully sooner, but I got to go to bed soon. But as soon as I'm up tomorrow, or Alvin, we can make sure that this replay makes way to you. And you can watch this one more time tomorrow as well. Okay. Then let's see a few more questions that we have. Um, can eMatico get content for us? Where can we find viral content? William, yep, eMatico can do that. You know, it uses RSS feeds, ironically enough. So the tutorial for that is in Fresh Desk already. I think, Alvin, if you could please link to the tutorial for eMatico, that'd be great. But for viral content, there are multiple different solutions out there. I mean, I, I, I can't go into that right now because there's so many different paid solutions and I'll be playing favorites if I recommended any. So I'll, I'll hold that back for later. But there are ways to get viral traffic out there. Uh, Rainier is asking, I'm an affiliate marketer as well. What are the best ways to promote affiliate links or offers with Syndranker? Well, Rainier, it's pretty simple actually because if you're an affiliate marketer, I'm sure you are fully aware that the fact the the way you sell uh, or do your recommendations basically is often via content, right? Mostly reviews. That's one of the most popular ways how to promote affiliate offers. Uh, you write a, an honest review and then at the end you include your affiliate offer. Uh, and that's how you do it. You write your content, and each time you add uh, new content to your uh, your review blog, so to say, uh, you syndicate that content all over your uh, different social media accounts, so that they push traffic back to your blog, and that way you generate traffic. And with traffic, you obviously generate your sales. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. So we've got a uh, Gary. Kramer asking a question, um, which is, I think uh, maybe you can help, Stephen. Can you syndicate posts you make on a local Google My Business listing to rank it higher in the business box? I don't completely know. Uh, um, can you syndicate posts? Depends on if you have an RSS feed, uh, you make a local Google My Business listing. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean with uh, a local Google My Business listing. I know, are you talking about the google.com slash business, the, the new uh, pages they recently launched, or are you talking about something else? Because if you're talking about the new, like the local business pages, uh, the basically website creator they recently launched, I'm not 100% sure if they have RSS feeds. I would assume they have, but I, I haven't had time to actually look or play with those things at all. 
but and if you can use that to rank it higher in the business box, I'm also not sure what you mean in the business box. Are you talking about the the, the map pack or something else? Because I'm not sure about that. Uh, what is spin rewrite? Spin rewriter is a software uh, that helps spinning content. It's it's actually one of the best in the in the market out there. I will be looking at setting up a PBN. So another, if for I, I saw a f uh, various questions about PBN. So if, if you're really interested in that, a really cool trick, uh, I'm actually using in a case study as well. I, I'm kind of lifting the, the 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 curtain a little bit here, but a really cool trick is using expired uh, Web 2.0 assets. So for example, Tumblr is a very 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 powerful one in that. And uh, there's a lot of uh, gigs like on Conquer or on Fiverr where you can buy uh, expired Tumblr uh, accounts and uh, set up pages there and uh, add some content to it and then use them to uh, syndicate your content with Syndranker. And uh, using that, you can get awesome, very high-powered backlinks uh, to your money site using Syndranker. But that's something I'll uh, I'll use in in a in a nice use case we're working on uh, to go into a little bit deeper. But that's just a little tip uh, for you guys. Um, okay, see, sorry, I think I was questions. typing with the microphone on. Alvin, can we show just, well, are you still if you're still around, can we please show to Dave some training links where everything is located for different social media accounts and David saying that we uh, haven't syndicated anything. David, just to give you kind of, that's uh, kind of annoying me, we have syndicated at least in our own account over 3,000 times already. So. Please don't tell me it doesn't work. It does work, but if you're facing problems, we can help you, uh, but it does work. Alvin, can I ask you to please demo the training area once? All right, sure, Neil. Yeah, I'm just grabbing the screen from you. Sure. All right, so right now, guys, you should be able to see the training screen now. Um, in order to get to this page, you need to go back to your Syndranker account, and there's a, on the left side here, you will see a training uh, link. So you just open it up, and you will be able to get the specific steps on how to, let's say, for example, create a Pinterest profile, uh, create a Facebook profile, Tumblr, Tumblr blog, Bitly profile, all that. You can also go to the home page here. And there are some getting started videos in training as well. So you have to create a scheduled campaign, how to set up a recurring campaign, how to create a campaign, how to add edit, edit clients in. And we also have two pages here that are specific to how to get started and how to use the WP Imatico plugin. So first is we have the three steps on how to get started. So if you're not sure, if you, you haven't logged into the software yet and you're not sure how to get started, it's going to be a quick overview of how you can set up the accounts, how was the next step going to be, like the content syndication, and of course how to use the report section and you can repeat the same process. So if you want to get started, I, I, would, uh, I would recommend going to this page because this is going to be the quickest way for you to well get started. Of course, if you're going to uh, use the the WP Imatico plugin, you also get a quick demo here on how to set set it up to, for your WordPress site, even work for your existing plugins, and of course how you can curate content as well. So yeah, uh, so this is going to be a quick breakdown. This is just for how to use the software. This is going to be how to get started really quickly, and the tutorials. Mainly here, on this, on uh, I mean, 25 of those are going to be specific to a to a certain process. So it's really broken down broken down into specific tutorials rather than just combining everything in once. Okay. All right. Let me see. Great. Yeah. So Thank if you're you, good. Alvin. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So whenever you get stuck with anything. Uh, 
just refer to the tutorials here and if you have any questions just cl click on the new support ticket here and uh, you can you can directly in get in contact with us and we'll help you out okay excellent uh, let me see let me see let me see Okay, so any other questions we can answer for you today? Uh, I'll repeat it one last time. The webinar replay will be available after or within 24 hours. We'll mail you about it. We'll let you know where it is. Okay. Dave, I do... Uh, okay, Alvin, can you log into the please, uh, the, the team at team at Sinranker account for me? Uh, sure. Yeah. There we go. And could you go into reports for me, please? And I think it's the first report that I wanna want you to show. Uh, just click on that view report, first one on top. Okay. So Dave, just to, um, just to, how should I say it nicely? Just to give you an answer here, you can see there's one of the links down there for Google+. Plus. So yes, syndication automatically happened to Google+. Plus. If it didn't happen for you, it could be multiple reasons. One, you did it wrong, in which case we can help you, it's fine. Two, you did it wrong, in which case we can still help you, but you gotta contact us. And you gotta give us the exact details of what you were trying to do and which campaign it was, what your login details are, I guess, because we you probably need us to fix it up for you. In that case, we really, really need to know what went wrong, so we need those details from you. And I'll encourage anyone, if you log a ticket, and if you don't get a fair response to that, just, you know, you're in the Facebook group, ping us there, and we'll make sure that you do. Okay? All right. Okay, let me see what's next. What other questions do we have? Okay, good night, Colin. That's fine. Uh, guys, so yeah, WPE Matic was offered for free when you purchased Sinranker. It was on your thank you page, but if you can't see it for some reason, Alvin, perhaps I think it's okay if you also get it added to the fresh desk. I think you can do it yourself as well because we have admin rights there. But where there's a demo video, you can even add a download link to the plugin. That's fine. Okay, Dave Stratus, if you can drop your ticket number for me, I can check it out. Uh, just let me know, drop your ticket number, and we can have a look at it after the session. Okay, cool, excellent, everyone. Great to have you here. It's been okay. I'll answer a few more questions, and then I'll do the closing. Um, do we have to set up one set of syndication group for every niche? Um, no, you don't. I mean, I would re recommend so, yeah. though, Neil. Sure, please. Yeah, I would recommend you to do that. Like uh, backlinks are um, like kind of what we talked about earlier. Uh, backlinks have to be relevant. There's a lot of different ways it can be relevant, but obviously, uh, market specific is is the most obvious and the best relevancy. Uh, so if you're talking about local, for example, geogra geographic, yeah, that's the word, right? Geographic relevancy is also okay. So think about real world situations, right? So if, if Plumber in, in Texas, Dallas, uh, has some friends from other businesses and they set up links uh, in, in that same geographical area, that makes sense because people do that. So in that sense, it works. But if you have a, a plumber business in Dallas and you're getting links from a technology business in Canada and another technology business in, in Japan and maybe a health business from, from Germany, that doesn't make sense. So you have to keep those things in mind. And I would recommend uh, grouping everything together so at least uh, you know uh, whenever you need a link from a specific market, uh, make the group that specific market and then you can kind of organize yourself better. Yeah, okay, that's a better response. Let me just see if I can, someone asked where can we find the bonuses. Let me see if I can grab the thank you page for you. Okay, there we go. Mm. Okay, so one more time, here's the thank you page. All your bonuses are there and some more information as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, just, you know, 
check everything there, see if you get stuck, you can always let us know. Okay. Yes, guys, there will be a replay. <laughs> Many times this has been <laughs> asked. There's always going to be a replay unless, for some reason, go to webinars, cruise us, but it usually doesn't happen anymore. They've been improving that quite a bit. So normally, yes, there will be a replay. Yeah, especially for training sessions. I think it would be unfair not to give out a replay for these. Um, okay. Does the link indexer help and how? Then a good question. Alvin, I, I know you said we couldn't show a demo earlier. Can we show a demo now at least? And then I'll answer the uh, question in chat as well. Yeah, so the, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the indexing. Uh, indexing, uh, I think uh, Neil exp explained it earlier in this webinar pretty, pretty very good as well, very clearly. It's just basically letting Google know that you are there. So uh, Google is, of course, a very smart engine, and they in, uh, index a lot of the stuff themselves. But uh, if you help Google, they like that. They like that a lot. The more you, uh, you help Google, the more love they will give you. So uh, an indexer, what it does is just basically putting up a sign, a big sign, uh, to Google saying, hey, guys, we are here. We are new. Please have a look at our website. That's what an indexer does. And it's very important that you do it. So basically, what the indexer does is, uh, like, you, you yeah, it, it gets the URLs from all the syndicated content to your uh, social accounts and your Web 2.0 properties, and it takes those URLs and it starts indexing those specific URLs. So for each of them, it puts up a sign to Google, like, "Hey, look, I'm new content. I'm right here." And uh, Google goes to those websites, they index those websites, and then because they obviously have a backlink back to your website uh, as to where you want them to point, uh, it will then follow those links and index those links, and then you will get your SEO juice uh, for them. I hope that makes sense. And uh, Alvin, if, if you can show that. All right, sure. So. Yeah, you should see the screen right now. So yeah, this is especially for those who have already started using or building links or syndicating content using Syndranker. So if you haven't set up any campaigns yet, uh, this will really work. So if you have set up campaigns, it's pretty easy. Just click on Add, select whatever campaign number that you you can choose. Let's say for example this one, and it's gonna show you all the content that's syndicated on that campaign. So let's look for another one here. For example, this one, right? We're gonna click on add and from here you can select whatever URL you want Google to index. So basically you advertising to Google, hey, this is new content it's like what Neil what, what Steven has mentioned and you click and start indexing the links and it will send out a request to Google to basically to look at the content and provide the backlinks to your to your website. So it, that's actually get what gives you more SEO juice compared to just syndicating content, but also telling the search engine that you have content that the, that you that you can use for whatever you niche you have. All right. So yeah, that's pretty much the uh, quick explanation of what the indexer does and how it works. Okay, um, Alvin, I'll just also drop the links for everyone to the upgrade sales pages. In case you missed any and you want to check them out, uh, you can go there and check them out. That's completely fine as well. You can do you can use the third party indexer too. You just have to download all the links and then manually go there and upload them there. Uh, how is your indexer better than others on the market? It's a hard one to say. I, I don't really, I mean, I don't really know because to me, is this an indexer? Like I said, I'm not really maybe best place to answer that. Maybe Stephen isn't either. But all I can tell you is that we ping as many sites as we can get uh, and uh, we do it as, at a faster rate as well. So we knock on Google faster and let them know that your site's already up and the, running. The thing is with indexers, mo a lot of them are very similar. Uh, they all work on very similar uh, concepts and so uh, those hours, uh, the one we are using is, is proven. Uh, it's been around for a very, very long time, so obviously we did our research into that. And um, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not even sure if I should should say this or not, but we are working on uh, the, our own indexer for ourselves as well. Um, 
there is only one indexer that I know of that is more powerful than all of them combined basically and that's one we will show in our next webinar on Wednesday which we talked about a little bit earlier on as well um, but that's that's something different which you'll uh, find out in that webinar but it's general it's just a very good indexer it works it does its job and uh, so that's the most important part of course <laughs> I just joined the webinar says uh, <laughs> You're a little bit late. We're about to stop. We're about to sign off. Uh, so you basically missed everything. But yes, there will be a replay. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, now, just so you know as well, as I mentioned, I have dropped the link to the upgrade page. So if you, if you haven't purchased that yet, if you have any questions about that, you can go ahead and uh, you can check that out. No worries. Okay. Uh, Alex, just an answer to your question. Let me say yes, but not the indexer, Alex. Not the indexer. Indexer is only available at a monthly price. And, you know, that's for a simple reason that it costs us to keep it active. Like, literally, every time you put in a post for us to index it for you, it costs us something to go out there and tell someone. So we can't give that, you know, as any one time fee. Okay? Yeah, Joy, that's correct. That's correct indeed. Okay, then thank you everyone. Uh, it's been great having you on the session. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the Wednesday. I think that will be more results driven session. I think today was more kind of demo and showing you how to use different things. It's, it's well, somewhat more theoretical, I, I would say. Wednesday is going to be more hands-on, more results based, more ranking based. So if that interests you, if local interests you, do show up live to the session. I think you will be amazed uh, and that's what I'm most excited about. And um, yeah, we'll be in touch and the replay will be posted in 24 hours within your training area. Yeah, so Wednesday, yeah. The, the, the webinar uh, we were talking about, it, we're basically going to explain and uh, demonstrate a complete business model for you. So if you're interested in that, so definitely, definitely join us because it's going to be a lot of fun and you're going to learn so much. Like, trust me, you'll probably never seen a system like that ever before. So definitely be there. Hey, one more thing. If I can ask everyone for a favor here, just give me a quick second. And I'm going to put up a post uh, inside of the KV Social Group. Just let me know what you thought of this webinar, if you liked it. I mean, I think it'd be a good incentive to get more people on on Wednesday as well. Uh, Stephen, if you can just talk for a minute or so, I'll just um, put up the post and I'll drop the link in the chat box. Sure, sure thing. So, um, a little bit on about what we're going to do Wednesday. Oh, some guys are asking me uh, what time Wednesday? 5 p.m. EST. So, that's 5 p.m. New York time. It was too fast, ton of linking. I'm not sure what you're, uh, what you're uh, referring to there, uh, Etsy. All right, looking for, yeah, the case study uh, I'm working on is, is uh, in combination with what we're doing Wednesday and, of course, SendRanker itself. Uh, I kind of already uh, opened up a little bit of, an, a, of, a, of the curtain, just a little bit about the, the backlink and using uh, expired Tumblr accounts. Uh, but, yeah, as soon as the whole setup is done, uh, we'll share it with everybody, of course, in the members area. Uh, okay, the information is hard to follow, but I'm a beginner. Well, Etsy, just there's going to be a replay, so just watch it again. Uh, that will definitely help you out, probably. And if you have any specific questions ever, you can always contact us uh, via support, of course. Exactly. And like I said, I mean, some of the stuff we did discuss was so advanced, even for me. But I think that's a good thing, because when you are ready to scale up, you can always look back to this training and find valuable information, even you know, a few months to a year down the line. Uh, Dave, we're looking forward to seeing you on that session as well. I've just dropped a link to the Facebook group and uh, just leave a comment in there. Let us know what you thought about this session. I mean, you know, I think I like to hear back from our customers. I like to hear back from you to see what you thought about these webinars because I love doing these training sessions. I think, you know, it helps me showcase you stuff that we know well and we do well, especially in this case, Stephen knows a ton about SEO. So please do leave a comment. And, uh, you know, again, that'll inspire other people to show up, show up on the 3 p.m. session as well. And other than that, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next call. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks, everyone. See you on Wednesday.
All right, guys. See you guys on Wednesday as well. Uh, Sean, when can I talk to you about linking local supremacy blocks? I'm not sure what you mean by that because local supremacy doesn't have or offer any blocks. So uh, just reach out to support uh, via kvsocial.zendesk.com or to me privately if you have my details. Okay. All right, so guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Talk soon. Talk soon, guys.